You and I, we're going on a mission. A mission to develop the most versatile Canon C70 rig that's out there. Something that toes the line between form and function. I think you're gonna like this. Let's check it out. At the core of this rig is the Canon C70. I've got a video that I'll link to on the screen as well as in the description below that explains why I chose the C70 and how I created this equation, if you will, that looks at image quality as it relates to image acquisition and the C70 was that answer for me. All right, I promised in the title that this rig would fit any scenario. So let's define what that looks like, all right? First thing, it needs to be able to be stripped down easily and fit into a backpack. So that way I can take it anywhere. Bonus points for being carry on compliant. All right, number two, it has to be able to fly on a gimbal easily, okay? I don't wanna use any tools or any extra bits and pieces to make it work. It's got to seamlessly integrate onto a gimbal. Three, it needs to be able to be built up into a handheld rig with professional audio capture. Something that's gonna be heavy enough to take out some of the micro jitters, but still light enough that you could lug it around all day, right? And four, it has to fit seamlessly into a production with a larger crew. Now this is quite the list of tasks and we're gonna work our way from the top all the way down. I do want you to know that in the description, I'm gonna put links to all of the different pieces of gear and equipment that I talk about today. So go down there, screenshot that, or even better yet, save this video so you can find it when you build your own rig. So the first thing is transport, and it starts with this backpack. This is the Atlas Athlete Backpack. I'll have a review for this guy coming soon, so make sure you hit subscribe so you don't miss out on that. So the C70 comes out of here, pretty well ready to rock on a gimbal. The first thing you'll notice is I do transport it with a lens on it. Here I've got the RF 15 to 35 2.8. That lens is pretty much glued to the front of this camera. It, it's really been my workhorse. You'll notice that I did choose to go with the RF over the EF and in that uh, C70 video specifically. From earlier, you'll kind of get an idea as to why I did choose that uh, to go with the RF over the EF. But for this sake, just know I do transport it with the 15 to 35 on it uh, to again, make this transition as seamless as possible. On the front of the lens, I do have a Polar Pro circular polarizer. This is another one of those things that pretty well just lives on the camera. The circular polarizer is great. It helps to kill some of that polarizing light that, that just bounces around in the everyday world, right? It also, I find, brings out some really nice blues in the skies as well as some great tones in the greens. I hate having to screw on lens filters up, up front and I hate step up rings more than that. So I've got one for each of my lenses. That's also a reason the C70 was the perfect camera for me because it has great built-in NDs, fewer steps, fewer things to have to carry and just remember and potentially lose or break. So RF 15 to 35 with the Polar Pro uh, circular polarizer on the front. Next thing you'll see outside of just the standard stock C70 is we have a small rig handheld cage. Now the handheld cage is a three quarter cage. So it's got a bottom plate, side plate, and top plate. You'll also are gonna notice on the bottom of the plate, I'm gonna, I'm gonna move this case out of, the, I'm gonna move this out of the way. Bear with me. Okay. So back to the small rig cage. We have on the bottom uh, also a small rig RS2 Manfrotto plate that I have attached to it. One of the things that's really great about this small rig cage, specifically on the bottom, it has a whole handful of quarter 20 mounts, three different rows specifically. And what this does as it relates to the RS2 is it allows me to offset this Manfrotto plate just a little bit. And if you're familiar with the C70 on the RS2, Sometimes the right side of this hits the right side of this gimbal arm. Being able to offset this small rig Manfrotto plate to the right just a little bit shifts the camera to the left just far enough that I actually have clearance here and I can fly this as it is on my gimbal. So that is great. We're gonna rig it up here in just a minute. So small rig Manfrotto plate on the bottom, small rig half cage, on the side of this half cage, again, a handful of quarter 20 mounts. 
This bar is actually a NATO rail as well. Uh, so if you want to put on a side handle, which we'll do when we get to the handheld rig in a minute, you're free to do that here. Another thing that comes with this small rig handheld kit is an HDMI protector. That's great. You know, one of the drawbacks to the C70 is it doesn't have an SDI out port. Uh, so we just have the HDMI out. So having a HDMI clamp on the side to add a little bit more security and protection to that connection really gives me some peace of mind. So I like having that there, all right? So that's the side, then the top is basically just a giant cheese plate. A couple things worth noting are a few cold shoe mounts, this one specifically being on a 45 degree angle, which comes in clutch for the handheld rig. Uh, so stay tuned for that. There's also a built-in NATO rail up top that we're gonna use for a top handle. So this is the smallest the Canon C70 is going to be for my uses. Again, slides right on to the RS2, and then because I had the small rig uh, Manfrotto plate, it has teeth on the bottom of it that engage with the RS2 so I can use this micro adjuster that's on the side here to move this forward and backwards and easily get it balanced just like so, right? So there's the C70 balanced. We'll lock this in place with the lever. Balanced up and down, side, unlock this access too, and we'll turn it on because why not? Give that just a minute. All right, so there you have it. Canon C70, ready to rock, out of the bag on the RS2. So just a few more things to note before we switch over to the handheld rig is on the back of the gimbal setup, I do have the Canon BPA30 battery. Uh, helps give me some clearance and keep the weight down for the gimbal. And then as far as SD cards go, I do use a match set of ProGrade 128 gig V90 cards, which lets you record anything that you would need to record, any video format, including raw formats, straight to the SD card. So now we move into the handheld rig. Those components are in my bag. I'm gonna get them out because I don't think you need to see me get them out of my bag. I'm gonna set them right there. These are the pieces we're gonna to use to build out our handheld rig. One of the aspects of this handheld rig worth noting is that we want it to be a little bit heavier. Uh, a heavier camera creates a more organic handheld feel. It's got less micro jitters and it just feels a bit more natural. So the added weight is gonna be great. First thing we're gonna do is replace the original BPA 30 Canon battery for a BPA 60. It's a bit larger, larger capacity, helps us run longer. It also has a D-tap out port on it, which we're gonna to use to power the rest of this. I didn't wanna do with the V-mount option because I don't really like having rail systems on there because the rails make it harder to transport and it's more things to break down at the end of the day. So I like using the original battery uh, that goes with the camera and then I can draw power off of that battery for this rig. So BPA 60 on the back. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add a handle to the left side. Now this is a handle from 8SIN. I actually had this on an FX3 rig that I used last year. Uh, I really loved this handle and kept it for a while because I wanted to find another situation to use it. This is a very ergonomic handle. It fits the hand very well, especially in comparison to what we normally have, which is just a straight piece of metal. So I really enjoy this. And I have added on here to my small rig cage is an Ari Rosette adapter. And this also has the Ari Rosette on it. So we're going to just thread on this handle. All right, next thing we're gonna add is the shotgun mount holder. If you remember, one of the key features of the handheld rig was it needed professional audio. And I have a Sennheiser 416 that I really want to rig to this. So we're gonna use the original Canon C70 mic holder because it's got a great shock absorber on it to mitigate any handling noise. And it also comes with a cold shoe adapter, which we're going to slide right onto that 45 degree cold shoe that I mentioned earlier. This offsets the mic in such a great way. And you're gonna see why once we add the monitor. So we'll slide the Sennheiser 416 in there, lock that in place. 
And then as far as cabling goes, I have a Condor Blue Mini XLR to XLR cable, and it's nice short length, so I don't have a lot of cable to deal with. That works out great. And I'll just run that into input one on the C70. When it comes to my audio settings, now there are the external audio settings behind the screen. What I haven't set up in camera is that input one, which is the Sennheiser 416, records to both channel one and two. And that gives me independent, independent control of those channels. So on the top dial, I usually have that set to around five. I find that to be good for most of my dialogue. And then I set channel two via that second dial, 10 to 12 decibels lower than channel one. And it gives me a built-in safety track, if you will, in case anything were to clip on channel one, I can easily recover it in post with the information gathered on that safety track on channel two. Next thing we're gonna see is the small rig top handle with the NATO mount. This comes with the handheld rig from small rig. So that's gonna just slide on there real nice and then lock in place. And we have top handle for our C70. I wanna attach a monitor to this as well. So the next piece is gonna be the monitor mount. And this is a very specific monitor mount that I found from UU Rig. All right, link in the description. There's a couple reasons I needed this specific mount. The first part is the way it mounts is via a 3 8 screw with two RA locking pins. That's going to be great for mounting this to the top handle. I also wanted to make sure that I was able to mount the monitor on the front of the handle and not on top for a couple reasons. The first, when you grab the top handle, you don't want to have a monitor right there because you wouldn't be able to, to grab it. Additionally, it keeps the overall height of the rig down. And this is kind of just a weird personal preference of mine, but I hate it when monitors are sitting on the top of the top handle and the camera is now two feet tall. It looks silly to me. So I like that this lowers the overall height, makes it feel a little bit more compact, as well as balancing this out in a really nice way. So that's what's going on there. Lock that in place. The nice part with the RA locating pins, and why I specifically one of those, is there's no play in that. There's no way to rotate this because it's locked in place. On the top of this U-Rig mount, there's also an RA locating pin. And my monitor that I have with me today is the new Hollyland Mars M1 monitor. This thing really helped bring this whole rig together in such an incredible way. Uh, we're gonna talk more on that later, so, so hang out for that. We're gonna drop this on. It has a quarter 20 thread on the bottom, as well as female holes for the RA locating pin. So when I screw this on, this is the only monitor solution that I've found that you cannot twist this off once you attach it. Usually there's just one quarter 20 mount on the bottom, and over time you try to twist that or whatever, the monitor comes unscrewed. And that is the most frustrating thing to me. So love this and like I said keeps that profile down really low and the last part that's awesome about this rig in particular I mentioned earlier the 45 degree offset of the Sennheiser 416 you can see how that in conjunction with the C70 mount mounted like I have here gives us enough room for that Sennheiser 416 to stick out past the monitor if you've rigged up cameras before in the past with shotgun mics you've likely run into the situation where your monitor blocks the microphone or the microphone blocks the monitor and you have to rig it in a really kind of weird fashion. So the way that this all laid out really worked out great. And then as far as cabling goes, I usually try to build myself a little cable harness just to keep the, the cables from flopping all over the place. So I've got one D-tap that'll go to the back as well as HDMI out and these cables weave themselves around to the back. And plug in like so. So this is how I do it. I'm a big cable management guy. I hate cables that are just all over the place. This is my solution that I found. One other thing that I might be doing differently in the future. Right now I have on a NPF dummy plate. Um, on the back of this monitor that you'll notice, I will probably run power 
uh, to that. I like that this has a locking connector on it. Um, I don't particularly like that this can just be pulled out. So I will probably switch out my D-tap power cable to something with a locking connector and connect it on the back there. But that's uh, kind of a minor nitpicky thing. You kind of get the idea as to how, how this works. All right, so this is the Canon C70 handheld rig that has changed my life, right? Top handle, side handle, you can grab it on the side here as well. I like to hold this in nice and close to my body to give me an extra point of contact. And everything I need is just, it's right here, it's compact. It doesn't make a lot of noise, nothing rattles around. This is professional quality. All right, so going back to our list, we have easily transportable, we have toolless gimbal use, and we have a professional handheld rig, which means the last thing that we have to do is get this to work on a larger production with a crew. This means that it could be used in tandem with other cinema cameras. It could be living on sticks. It could be maybe on a dolly, who, who knows? But the most important unifying piece of that set is going to be time code, right? And fortunately, this camera does have a time code port on the front. So we can, we can get time code into this. The way that I do that is via tentacle sync. I have a cable from Alvin's cable that goes from BNC time code to 3.5 millimeter. And if you're not familiar with tentacle sync on the back of those devices, they have a Velcro backing and they provide you with an adhesive Velcro backing. Notice that I've attached that Velcro to the top of that small rig man photo plate. It's the perfect size for it. So when I need time code, I take my tentacle sync, I plug it in and then I just stick it right on top of that. It tucks it away underneath the lens really well. Um, so that way it's not in the way and it's not creating more cables or, or, or require any additional rigging. It's just ready to go. So that takes care of time code. One other aspect of larger crews and productions is wireless transmission. Uh, that's where this two-in-one monitor comes into play for me. This is a monitor and a transmitter. On larger sets, there's oftentimes what they call a video village for the director, the producer, maybe the client to view. And it's, and it's a hub for all of the wireless video feeds to do, be displayed on one monitor so that way the powers that be, they can see what's what's happening on camera without having to be directly over the shoulder of the cinematographer or the camera operator. I did mention before that we were gonna dive into this Hollyland Mars M1 monitor a little bit deeper and explain how it was so pivotal in bringing this rig together to keep it as simple and minimalistic as possible while still being effective, right? Uh, so we're gonna do that in another video, which I'm gonna link on the screen now. So feel free to go ahead and click that. If you didn't click that video card, then it's probably because you're not interested in another monitor right now, which is cool too. I hope you found this video about this Canon C70 handheld rig helpful. Uh, I'm new to the channel, so you probably haven't had the chance yet to subscribe to my channel or like it. So do all the things down below and uh, I look forward to seeing you in the next video.